Hello everyone, I'm 10th Dr. Matt, and in this Kilgrave cosplay how-to video, I'm going to show you what you need to put together the 1000 cuts slash take bloody number variant. So let's get started. Now this look is probably my second favorite, and that's not only because I really, really like the shirt and vest and pocket square that goes with it, but because it's also another purple suit variant. And so for me, since I already had a purple suit, that meant that I didn't have to buy another suit. That being said, the purple suit that is worn in a thousand cuts and take a bloody number is not the same as the police station suit. It is slightly different, so let's talk about that first. Now, considering the fact that Kilgrave can talk anyone into giving him free clothes, it comes as no surprise that he would have multiple different purple suits so that basically, if he wanted to, he could just never wear the same one twice. However, thankfully for us, the uh, costume designers kept some continuity here, and this suit is also a Paul Smith from the Beard line. And I believe that this suit is from the same Traveler line that my purple suit is. Features of this suit are two button closure and straight flapped pockets, notched lapels, and this one does have the puckered stitching along the edges of the lapels and pockets and things that his police station suit did not. But also looking at the uh, tone of the purple color of this suit, to my eyes it looks a lot closer to the suit that I have than his police station suit, which you can, if you look really closely, you can see little uh, bits of like red and yellow and green in the weave. Um, this suit looks more of a pure purple color. As far as the trousers portion of the suit are concerned, um, really not much to say there. It basically, it's a slim cut suit, so you're going to get slim cut trousers as well. They are flat front, and um, that's really all there is to say. So for me, th that meant that my purple suit worked out perfectly as a sort of hybrid between the two. It's, it's not totally screen accurate for either one, but it's close, very close, uh, to uh, basically the exact center of the two suits. So for me, it was, it was a no-brainer to put this variant together next. So obviously, if you want a Paul Smith, you're just gonna have to keep your eyes on eBay as this particular suit is no longer currently available. Um, but it may come back around because they do have a lot of other uh, colors and variations of the Traveler suit from the Biard line. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if a purple one pops back up depending on the season. That being said, there is a suit, or at least there was, I'm not sure if it's still available now, but there is a suit from uh, House of Fraser that was on sale that also popped up on the RPF. So I'm gonna link the uh, person who posted it below and also a link to the House of Fraser website. But this is like a fantastic alt suit. The, the color looks almost exactly the same as mine and it has everything else that you want. It has the notched lapels, the puckered stitching, the straight flap pockets. Uh, the two button closure and it's actually uh, it's a mohair suit so my Paul Smith is a blend of mohair and wool so it looks so similar so and and the price was great I think it was like uh, uh, maybe like under two hundred dollars US um, so definitely a worthwhile buy uh, if you're looking for a fantastic alt so once you've got your suit the next most important piece is the shirt so given the uh, costume designer's track record, it should probably come as no surprise that this shirt is from Paul Smith, again from the Biard line. And this one is the stone floral shirt in purple. Uh, it was also offered in a blue variation, which uh, if you ask me, looks quite nice as well. So if you're looking to pick one of these up, you might still be able to find one. And, and uh, judging by photos that I've seen of other Kilgrave cosplayers so far, this variant seems to be the most popular. And I think that's due in part to uh, the availability of this shirt. Uh, I mean, up till fairly recently, they were still available from Paul Smith's website on clearance. They were at a number of other places like uh, House of Fraser, Jonathan Trumbull, List.com. I mean, they were pretty widely available. I'm not sure how many are still out there now, but I'm sure we'll see them uh, start popping up on eBay and, and that sort of thing. But uh, if you can find one, definitely nab it. As far as an alt shirt for this, this might be a little bit tougher to find because it is a very unique pattern. I mean, if you look closely at it, it's basically the pattern are like rose petals and they sort of swirl around. So I personally haven't seen anything that looks quite like it, but so I would, uh, I guess the best thing that I could recommend is going to your local men's shop 
and seeing what they have for sort of uh, purple variations of shirts, they may have something that looks the part. Next, let's talk about my personal favorite part of the outfit, the waistcoat. So here it is, folks, the screen accurate waistcoat from Ted Baker. And for me, this is really like the piece de resistance of this outfit. I mean, I love this waistcoat. It is gorgeous. And now before I say anything else about it, I have to give a huge shout out and major thank you to John from Cosplay Craziness for helping me acquire this. Uh, without his help, I don't think I would have ever gotten this vest. So the major things that we need to know about this, it is a herringbone style uh, gray vest and this actually the the tag said purple and um, if you look very closely at this fabric you can see that there are little threads of like a purple damson -y color woven into the gray herringbone and it just it complements the suit very nicely the other major features five button closure with these uh, nice contrasting brown buttons we've got the double pocket flaps on the right side single on the left side and also a uh, breast pocket as well. And as you can see here, the lining, which is also uh, lining the pocket flaps and things, is just this really, really lovely, very unique um, pattern with, it's got like purple flowers and stags and fish and cr crazy stuff. I mean, this, if you wanted a piece of clothing that will stand out in a crowd, this thing is going to stand out. So if you're looking to get yourself one of these bad boys, uh, you may be able to find one on eBay if you get the timing right. I have seen quite a bit of Ted Baker waistcoats pop up on eBay, uh, some of which are from the same line. Now this is from the Tight Lines uh, line of clothing from Ted Baker. So uh, I've seen quite a number of variations of this. I haven't seen the purple one, but I've seen uh, like a blue and a brown and a green maybe. So it is possible that you might get really lucky and find a purple one that'll pop up on eBay or, you know, even one of the other colors will look the part because they all are a, a gray base and they just have that little accent thread in the weave of whatever color it is. The good news though is if you can't find yourself a screen accurate one, there are a ton of options for gray waistcoats that have a herringbone style, um, I mean, Banana Republic, House of Fraser, I mean, you name it. It's, it's search gray herringbone waistcoat on eBay or whatever and you will find a ton of results. Uh, many of which have a five button closure, many of which have uh, flapped pockets and stuff. So, um, and a lot of them are pretty cheap, like $30, $40. Um, so plenty, plenty of options for alternate waistcoats. Now the nice little thing about this variant is that it doesn't require a tie, so you can save a few dollars there. And uh, so we can skip that part since there isn't one. And so let's talk about the next part, which is the pocket square. Now the screen worn pocket square is still quite a bit of a mystery at this point. Uh, no one knows for sure who the original maker was. Um, it did come up on the RPF thread though that uh, Stephanie Maslansky, the costume designer, did reply to an email and say that she was about 98% sure that it was Paul Smith. But um, I certainly haven't been able to find anything even you know, remotely close to it from Paul Smith on eBay and other places yet. Um, but at least that's that's a starting place to for, for our searches and things. But basically what you need to know here is it, it appears to be, um, I think, black and white based. Uh, it definitely has a bit of a satiny sheen to it, so it's probably silk. And um, I think that the design looks like some kind of a hibiscus flower maybe, or some type of floral design, big white flower on a black background. Now, that, the background could be navy blue. It might not be black. It's hard to tell, again, because the, the lighting of the show is so dark. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna show you the alt pocket square that I got that is actually navy blue and white, and I got it on eBay for about six or seven dollars. So here is my alt pocket square, and I really like this thing. I mean, in this, in this bright camera lighting, you can definitely see that it is navy blue, but uh, in dimmer lightings, this does look kind of black and white. So it, it does look the part pretty well. Um, the, the one downside for me is that this is a linen pocket square, so it lacks that um, shininess that the original had. But uh, all things considered, this was the one in terms of the floral pattern. This is the absolute closest thing I could possibly find. Um, 
any of the other ones that I found, the pattern was like really small, really close together, and just didn't really look right. And hey, for six, seven dollars, uh, I mean, you really can't beat that price. So as with most of his pocket squares, Kilgrave wears this in the puff fold, and um, he's just got a little bit more of it sticking out of his pocket than the others. That in there. And um, I think it looks great. It's definitely, uh, it's sort of an eye-catching thing because it's, it doesn't totally match with the outfit. It matches enough that it doesn't look bad, it doesn't clash or anything, but it really sort of pops out and grabs your eye. So those are the big pieces of this variant. So now let's talk a little bit about the accessories. Now, while we don't know for sure because we don't really see it in either one of these episodes, but uh, given his track record, we can assume that Kilgrave is wearing a belt with this outfit. And uh, I personally think that a black dress belt with a uh, silver buckle matches the best. But um, you could certainly wear like a dark brown dress belt also. That would also work nicely. So uh, really, that's up to you. Uh, obviously, this is not a, a major thing. It's just personal preference. And most people probably are not going to be commenting on the accuracy of your belt. So just wear whatever you like. Now let's talk about the watch for a second. Now, um, it's very hard to see in this episode and it's hard to get a clear screen grab of it, but I'll put up a little photo here and it does appear to be a different watch uh, than what he's wearing in most of the other episodes. Most of them, uh, it appears to be that gold face, brown band, very expensive uh, Alonga Cerno watch or possibly a replica of a Patek Sky Moon watch. And here, it looks a little bit more plain. It doesn't seem to be multifunction. It seems to be just a plain old silver-faced watch. And it's hard to tell whether it's a brown or black band. But uh, that is something to consider if you are in the market for a watch. Now, if you're not a big watch fan, or if you don't feel like spending money on multiple watches, that's totally understandable. So if you are looking for a Kilgrave watch that you're going to sport with multiple variants, I would recommend still going with something like this uh, Sterling Original with the gold face and the brown band, because that is what you can see most clearly throughout the show. Um, however, if you happen to have another watch, that looks the part, like I happen to have one, or um, if you find one that's cheap and you want to have something different for this variant, um, I would suggest going with something a little more simple. So this is what I, I just had this in uh, my collection of jewelry and stuff, and it looks pretty similar uh, from, from what you can tell from that blurry screen grab. Um, and you can always, you know, if, you're, if the band was the wrong color, you can always replace the band very easily and stuff like that. So uh, definitely you have some options as far as the watch is concerned. So with all that other stuff out of the way, that leaves us just the footwear for this variant. So uh, again, I'm going to be going with my funky purple and blue socks here just because they complement the outfit a little more nicely than a, like a plain black sock. Um, but obviously you don't see his socks very much, so you can just wear whatever the heck you want. And along the same lines, you don't really see his shoes that much in these episodes either. So it's hard to say what he might be wearing. I mean, again, throughout the show, he wears about 50 different pairs of shoes, uh, one of which is a Paul Smith the Aldrich Brogues with that, that are kind of like a brownish, grayish suede with purple shoelaces, which look great. Um, he wears some dark brown dress shoes, some black ones, and so, to be honest, I don't know what the heck he's wearing for shoes in these episodes, and uh, I personally, I mean, dress shoes are expensive, so I'm not about to buy a million pairs just solely to have for Kilgrave cosplay. So with that being said, I'm going to be still wearing my uh, black dress shoes with the Paul Smith Damson shoelaces because again they're gonna match very nicely with the purple suit but if you have uh, a pair of dark brown dress shoes they will also look great i would recommend though if you're wearing brown dress shoes uh, i would say to also wear a brown belt to match with that it'll just look a little bit nicer so that does it for my second Kilgrave cosplay how-to video. Um, I hope that you guys like this. I, I really, really love this variant, and so um, I'm, I'm looking forward to sort of a con season starting to get into full swing so that I can wear both of these variants and alternate. And of course, I'll still be wearing my uh, 10th Doctor outfit as well, but um, it's always just really exciting to put on a new cosplay and go wear it out somewhere and, and just see what people think and see how many photos you get and that sort of thing. So really looking forward to wearing this out. Now, one other quick thing, I don't know if you noticed, but my hair is a little bit different in this episode. I, this, this is more what I would call like a quick and easy Kilgrave hairstyle, which does not involve using a straightener at all. So um, if you guys would like to see a short 
hair tutorial on uh, how I did this particular Kilgrave style, let me know in the comments and I will certainly uh, be happy to do that as well. So that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and as always, thank you so much for watching.